At this point, Warframe has been running for 9 years, and that means that it has 9 years worth of content and things just pushed out to it. So it begs the question, how far are you into Warframe after these 9 years? You of course naturally could be a newer player, could be more of a long time player like me, but of course that doesn't matter. Let me know exactly how long you've really been playing and how far into the game you are. One indicator people like to use for how far into the game you are, how long you've progressed is mastery rank. Generally that's just an indicator of how many warframes, weapons, and just items you've leveled up to 30. So it's a general understanding. The next best one is just how many nodes on the map you've unlocked and if you have completed all of the quests because those are kind of crucial these days in unlocking the entire star chart. From there you can go with what items have you unlocked, like how much of this have you done, how much of that, and are you well versed in certain bossing and aspects of the game. But first, a word from this video's sponsor. Do you want to play a game that's both out for PC and mobile with crossplay functionality? Well, I bet you do. And today we have Raid Shadow Legends. Just recently, they have been celebrating their three year anniversary in game. So if you want to support the channel, make sure to check them out, scan the QR code on screen, or check out the link in the description or comment section below. And I wanted to go over the top three scariest bosses in my opinion. First off, we have the Spider Queen. Terrifying, summon spiderlings, heals, webs everywhere, gotta hate it, spooky as heck. Next, you have the Dragon. It's a Big dragon, what's not to love? Eyes go fire red, 10 out of 10 would recommend. And then we have the first clan boss. Look at him, he's a demonic, spooky big boy. All three of these bosses, massive, terrifying, spooky, and beautiful, so would recommend. And there's a ton happening in Raid this month as well. The Path of Light event, new champions, you can get a set of skins for the amazing Trend of Guilt Mallet. The big Deliana Chase event, log in for 7 days between now and July 20th and get the legendary Deliana. My main carry at the moment. The gifts keep coming, all new players listen up. Once you're in game just enter promo code MYDELIANA to get 50 XP brews to max your legendary hero Deliana level 50 as well as a ton of silver. Promo code is available from May 23rd to July 20th. There's never been a better time to get started if you use my link or scan my my QR code, new players, you'll get some free loot worth almost $30. We're talking free champion, Ayana, 200k silver, an XP boost, energy refill, and one ancient shard so you can summon an awesome champion as soon as you get in game. You'll find your rewards here in your inbox for the next 30 days only. Thank you, Raid Shadow Legends, for sponsoring this video. As I'm sure all of you are aware, I'm pretty much 100%ed with all of the important things that matter in the game at this point. Like, I've completed the entirety of the storyline, the quest line, uh, all of the like side quests, right? I've done all of that, I have all of the maps unlocked, my railjack stacked, my warframes and weapons are stacked, I have most of the mods that matter, I mean like anything is easy enough to kill as long as I throw mods on it, so right now in Warframe I'm at the point where like I'm end game Warframe. I have like 40,000 ducats that I've farmed up for Tenocon Barrow Katir, maybe 50,000 I haven't released that yet, but like it's pretty crazy if you think about it how much there is to do just in this game. Right now, I'm uh, running the Inadem, it's just the Incarnan Dagger weapon. Just trying to level this up a bit so we can take a look at it. It's a really strong weapon. Oh, I'm pretty much done leveling it. I don't know if I want to throw more form on it. Sorry, I'm not leveling this, I'm using it to kill everything while I level my Kuva Quartac. But, eh, that's fine. The Inadem, still a really strong weapon and I'll be making a video on it soon. It's one of the better uh, Incarnan weapons right now. But, hey, that's a video for later, right? So far in Warframe, I feel like most people are coming into the game. It's always a game that brings in new folk, right? And people are always checking it out. So I assume there's a good amount of people who are watching this video and listening along who are somewhat early on into the game, maybe like MR10-ish and uh, earlier, maybe like MR7 and earlier. After all, I have made a lot of random videos and guides here and there, so it's just kind of bound to happen, no shock there. But with Warframe being out for 9 years, there's definitely a good chunk and portion of people who are pretty much just chilling and running what I am, which is just everything. See, and I'll just send him a smiley face, right? We're just running whatever we can, leveling whatever we can. I myself am Master Rank 31, Legendary Rank 1, if you will, so 
I'm at the stage where Master Rank does not matter for me. Like, it doesn't. There's no reason for me to get a ton of Master Rank. It's just like a casual thing to do in the game. I've hit like full endgame Warframe, if you will, right? There's nothing needed, but I can do anything. So that's where I'm at. My Railjack, as I was talking about earlier, right? It's stacked. You may not even have unlocked Railjack yet. It's hard to say. A lot of people, uh, don't run a ton of the Railjack mission mode. It's the, like, spaceship mode if you haven't played it yet. Hey, maybe you'll eventually see it, maybe you'll like it, maybe you won't. It's less of a resource grind than it used to be, so that's nice. Maybe you haven't quite unlocked a good amount of Warframes yet, you're just still on your Warframe hunt. A lot of earlier Warframes are just acquired by running assassination nodes just throughout the star chart, so you have a good chance of actually getting it. Did unlock? Yeah, okay, it did go into an incarnate mode. As long as you just keep on chilling, you run the assassination nodes early on, you get a wide breadth of Warframes. Of course, the early game issue is always, how many Platinums do I have for Warframe and weapon slots? Early game is kind of like a pain in that regard, because you don't want to spend money, it's a free-to-play game, so you're just kind of chilling, and at a certain point, you unlock too many weapons in Warframes. So, you either need to get Platinum via trading in order to get more, or you have to sell off the Warframes and weapons you don't like in order to level more and progress. Of course, you can get Warframe and weapon slots occasionally from uh, events here and there. Whenever Warframe has uh, things like Nightwave and what have you, there's a lot of ways to like just get items, but it'll take some time. So, you can have a new Warframe and weapon slot unlocked every, I don't know, month or so, month or two, depending on how like packed events are, what time of year it is. So you can slowly obtain all of the slots required to just not have to worry about that like myself, but man, does that take a lot of time. So it's easier if you get into trading. A lot of people might not even be into trading, know that you can trade platinum for items like primed Warframes, uh, blueprints, relics, etc. As long as you just, uh, you know, chat around, go and trade chat, maybe look online, it's always possible. Fun fact, the reason I just got a headshot there is because you can headshot melee. Um, this game is truly a treasure like that, okay? You can headshot melee. So yeah, I just kind of wanted to talk about uh, Warframe progress, where everyone is in the game, and just kind of chill, right? It's a calm video day today in that regard. Like, how many bosses do you think y'all have killed? More of the late game Warframe bosses, I would say, people consider to be like Eidolons and, I don't know, Profit Taker these days. Because there's not really a whole lot of bosses that Warframe has late game with any reason to run them. Once you collect all of your Warframes and weapons, etc., you're just kind of casually running the one or two bosses for resources, right? People run Profit Taker for credits. People run... Or Orb Mother, or Profit Taker, Orb Weaver? Uh, either way, the Fortuna Open World bosses. I would say people run them for items, resources, loot. So they're considered like somewhat decent and hard to fight ones. Eidolons are definitely still what people consider to be like end game Warframe uh, bossing, bossing, like proper bossing, I guess. Just because there's no other harder boss than Eidolons in how they're set up. The annoying thing though is once you max out your focus trees and you're just kinda chillin', there's usually not a huge reason for you to continue on fighting a lot of Eidolons. And Eidolons are also hard to get into sometimes for people if they don't have nice amps or if they don't quite know what they're doing. So it can be kind of a pain. But hey, maybe you are an Eidolon hunter, maybe you are a bosser in Warframe. I feel like that's one of those more endgame-esque activities where you just fight bosses and go hard. Or maybe you're one of the players that likes to go just to level 9999, right? You like to do the very, very long endurance type runs in disruption, usually I believe it is, and get the highest level enemies. Is there really a reason to do that? No, no, not at all really. It's mainly for fun. The whole resource amount you get from getting enemies that high and stuff like that, it's not really uh, not really worth anything, right? It's, it's not like enemies getting to level 9999 makes them drop a ton of resources, right? It's not quite how Warframe works, they have it map set, but hey, it gets 
probably like some more resources as they level. I'd have to actually double check, but hey. It's just one of those fun endgame activities that people like to do. They like to stack up their Warframes, stack up their weapons, and see exactly how far and how much they can do in the game. It's like Eidolon speedrunning, boss speedrunning, min-max resource gathering. It's just one of those things that people like to do, especially as an endgame activity, because once you get to endgame in Warframe, there's nothing that you actually need to do. How far are you in Nightwave? Maybe you're completing Nightwave and all done that right now. It's possible. It's hard to say for sure, but Nightwave does last another month. Maybe, or sorry, yeah, about three weeks actually. Oh, nice, got all my melee headshots. And then in the other breath, we have Tenocon in another uh, straight month, so maybe you are all prepared for your Ducket Gathering Barrow Katir stuff for all of Tenocon, right? Are you all progressed there? I don't know. There's just so much random stuff to do in Warframe, so I'm always just kind of wondering where people are at, like what state of the game everyone's at, because naturally, again, I have everything unlocked that really matters fully, I can do whatever I feel like doing, there's no real limitations I have in Warframe other than like, hey, maybe I don't feel like modding something new, maybe I'm being lazy, maybe I don't want to do X or Y, but as far as like what the game needs you to do, it's not too bad. Once you get to Angels of the Zeraman, uh, the Zeraman, it's the newest map and update in the game. Those, I would say, would be the hardest inherent enemies and maps in general, right? The Angels of the Zeremen so far has been the hardest update in just sense of damage you take, enemy level, and like enemy shield tankiness. Some people hate it, some people love it, give it what you will, right? But that just goes to show, like, when you get later game, everything's a high leveling. Are you ready? Are you in that area of the game yet? I am naturally because my life is Warframe as a Warframe content creator and online internet person. So yeah, no, it always just goes to show how much time you spend on it. I only have like, let's see, did my profile very quickly. It'll show me Ah, oh no, stats. I only have 900, 1,017 hours played in game, right? Not too bad. Could be a lot worse, could be a lot higher. So that's like me in endgame, I guess. I would say it took me, didn't take me the full thousand hours naturally. A lot of Warframe I've just spent like messing around too, right? It's a casual fun game you play with friends, so. Hey, progress is progress. Today's video was pretty chill, so thank you all for watching. I do appreciate it. As always, if you want to support the channel, you can subscribe, like, comment down below, follow me over on Twitch, Instagram, Facebook, Twitter, TikTok, and just say hi everywhere. Of course, my main platforms are YouTube and Twitch, so follow me there, you watch along. Thank you, I appreciate it. Thank you all, and I will see you next time. Peace.